Hey everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Thursday, June 20th, 2013, and this is an update on the, um, I don't know what to call it anymore, the uh, Zero Fossil Fuel Pulse Motor Project. Um, it has taken on a completely different um, personality, and uh, it, it no longer resembles anything even close to um, a Muller motor, I believe. Uh, the, the design concepts have deviated so far away from the original design that uh, it's no longer a Muller. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to um, stop and put together this YouTube video because in the event that the concepts that I have come up with for this design actually work, I want to be sure that I've already documented the steps that went into the making of the project. I'm at least that hopeful. I wouldn't go as far as to say I'm optimistic, but cautiously hopeful that uh, I will see some sort of effect when I put this thing together. So uh, with that in mind, I have a coil winding jig that was made for me by uh, one of my nerd herd in the regular Ustream chat room called uh, Another Coil Gun. And um, he's got a pretty cool site called anothercoilgunsite.info, I think it is, or anothercoilgunsite.com. I forget which, but I'll, po I'll post the link below. Pretty cool. He made me this, this nice coil form, and it is designed to turn out coils that look like this. Okay, these are three-layer trumpet-shaped coils. That what I'm hoping will do is bend the uh, projection of the magnetic field between the north and south face in a non-linear fashion around the outside edge of the, uh, of the opening. I haven't yet decided whether or not I'm going to have the small tip facing the magnets on the rotor or the large face facing the magnets on the rotor. But uh, I'll probably try both just to see what happens. So anyway, this is how I go about making a three layer, 20 gauge, tri-filler, trumpet shaped coil for the next project. All right, so I'm gonna show this coil winding from start to finish. And I'll probably end up fast forwarding through some of it. But the first step is to put, first step is to align my, my wheel. Okay, there we go. You can see on the edge of the wheel, I have it marked with a Sharpie where I wanna stop winding. And this fiber washer that I'm assembling has a little slot cut in it that I use to start my wire. Okay. You can see my spool in the background here on the tabletop for the bandsaw. I just have it on a spindle that I can pull the wire off from. First thing I do is I put a little little notch, a little kink in the uh, wire at the end so it sits in the groove. Start preforming it just a little bit. It just slides into the slot of the fiber washer. bend it flat with the fiber washer underneath so I get a nice even even start and I have to get my second set of eyes so that I can see right up close as I'm winding this so here we go oh wrong way let's try that again that's better one two and we're off. Yeah, 
You'll notice I don't even bother counting anymore because I know exactly when I get to 42 turns on this first layer. My wire is just even with the edge of this mark that I've made with the Sharpie. Now this part is a little tricky. I'm using crazy glue or super glue and I'm spreading it evenly, nice and thin, and then I'm uh, spraying it with a bottle of uh, dissolved baking soda in water. And then I'm also spreading out a thin layer of, this, of the uh, super glue in between the layers of wire. Again, there are three layers. All right, so we'll go through how I'm curing this and finishing off the first layer. And we'll go ahead and wind the other two right behind it. And now you'll get to see on camera the effect of the baking soda dissolved in water on the super glue. Watch this. Turn snow white instant cure. Almost as good as the commercial product. You don't end up with a, uh, a bond that is as strong as when you use the uh, rather expensive tack pack product produced by Loctite, but it does a really good job anyway. So, let's cut this off right there. Bend it down into the notch. And now I'm ready to wind the second layer. Only thing I have to do is uh, prepare the, the wire for the fiber washer. Here's where it gets a little tricky because if I procrastinate at all, the super glue starts to drip down the edge of the coil, uh, the first layer of the coil. So I've got to keep moving quickly. Once I get this spread out, I'll put a half wind, put another put down some more of this glue on the other side. And that way the, uh, the layers of the coil are bonded together. And you, have, you end up with a very strong, physically strong coil. And I'm doing my best to not let this bleed onto the coil form because that damages the coil form. And away we go. Finish off on the outside here first. Spread it out. 
so that you don't end up with any bulging or high spots. That's the reason for spreading it out so thin, is so that it just flows to the intervening space between the coil or between the, the wires, but doesn't drip and leave any high spots so that the next layer on top will sit flat against the layer below it. And now we're ready for the last layer. In truth, I could probably keep going, but I think three layers is enough. Oops. Almost glued my finger to the coil. Okay, so here we go with the last layer. This went pretty quick. I've been saying to my nerd herd in the uh, Ustream chat room. By the way, uh, for those of you interested, I, I do broadcast quite frequently on Ustream, and I do utilize the Ustream chat room. So uh, those of you who might be interested to actually watch these broadcasts live, you can subscribe to my Ustream channel and receive email notifications, although my nerd herd does tell me that sometimes those email notifications are somewhat unreliable or untimely. I do apologize for that. But most of them don't subscribe to my Twitter feed, so I can't really announce my Ustream broadcast via Twitter because they don't tweet. All right, that's enough. So here we go, last layer. Those of you who actually have good eyesight won't need the, these damn goggles that I have to wear in order to see what I'm doing. So I hope you have a, hope you young whippersnappers have a easier time of winding these coils than I do.
Okay, so that's how the coils are made on the coil winding jig. And uh, again, the reason I'm doing this video is because I want to make sure that I've documented all the steps beforehand. And the, the, uh, the concept behind it is a little sketch that I posted on my Twitter page. I'll show you a picture of this sketch right now. Uh, it is essentially three sets of uh, pulse coils and above each coil you can see what the waveform should, should look like in t on the output leads of the coil in relation to the position of the rotor magnets as they approach, uh, sit on top of and uh, move away from the electromagnet or the electromagnetic coils. The principle behind this is to use a feed-forward design that will send a pulse from the next adjacent coil timed just at the point of zero crossing of the previous coil so that I should not need a voltage potential greater than what's being induced into the coil by the magnet in order to cause acceleration of the rotor. Um, that's the idea. I'm using three silicon controlled rectifiers. I'll probably end up using three Hall effect sensors to trigger the three silicon controlled rectifiers. And if it works, it should be very, very easy to replicate. No uh, fancy electronics or programming involved with like an Arduino controller, just uh, regular semiconductor components that are uh, very readily available and uh, very cheap. So that's, that's where we're going. Uh, Today is the 20th of June, one more week. One more week from today, I leave to go to Idaho. So I'm really looking forward to that trip. I'm hoping to sit down with Eric Dollard when I'm out there. Also, um, Mark Dancy did a, an article at revolutiongreen.com. I'll also post a link down below. Um, in fact, I need to look it up right now because uh, I forget the name of the person that that he did the and the name that I was groping for is Rosemary Ansley, who Mark Dancy just did a uh, article on at revolution-green.com. If you haven't tried and, and taken a look at that site, do yourself a favor and take a look at some of the articles being published over there. Uh, very good site, very uh, unbiased articles being written on the free energy fields. Uh, Rosemary is from Cape Town, South Africa, and she will be conducting a live presentation, supposedly, it is scheduled for 4 p.m. Cape Town, South Africa time, which is 10 a.m. Eastern time or 7 a.m. West Coast time on Saturday, June 29th. Now, Saturday is registration day for the Bedini Lindemann Conference. Between 7 and 9 a.m. is registration. 7 a.m. West Coast time is when the presentation is supposed to start. So I'm going to watch that presentation. Hopefully Mary, uh, Rosemary Ansley is on time and uh, actually presents her, her, working, uh, her working demonstration. So that should be very interesting. In fact, uh, might be uh, an interesting topic for uh, discussion at the, the Bedini Lindemann conference because it may help them advance some of their designs and, and theories. Who knows? But it's all fun. Uh, I will be there to uh, take in the conference as well and hopefully get an interview in with Eric Dollard. Until then, uh, I don't think I'll probably be making any more YouTube videos until then, but I will be making videos from the hotel when I'm there. Uh, reporting on the events and uh, the things that I've been seeing and uh, hopefully if I'm allowed maybe even shooting a little video I will ask permission uh, if they don't allow me to and they want to sell their own DVDs I'm sure that's probably what they'll want to do so we'll see how that plays out but anyway everyone take care thank you for following along I hope you're enjoying the project series as always please rate comment share and subscribe to my videos and peace <laughs>